I'm Mui Thomas. I have a visible difference. It's not easy having one of the world's rarest skin disorders, but I'm here to show you why. And this is why you should listen to me. Mui, you live with one of the world's most rare skin disorders. Can you help me understand it a little bit better? Um, so I've got a really rare genetic skin disorder. It's called Harlequinichthyosis. It's genetic. You can't catch it. Uh, you can you can touch me, you can hug me. I'm not in any pain. I think a lot of people, when they see me, because my skin is so red and scaly, they think, oh, you must be sunburned, you must be in pain. My skin grows roughly 10 times faster than the average person who might grow skin in about two weeks. So I grow that overnight. So it's a very, very fast turnover. And because of that, I, my metabolism is quite high, so I've got to eat a lot more and I would burn a lot more energy because of that. Okay, now you've had to deal with some shocking discrimination, online and offline. Mm. Can you talk me through the process of how you, you know, deal with such bullies? I don't think dealing with bullies ever will ever get easy for me because every time you think you get over it, the next time it just hits you just like that again. So something that I, re I really credit is the support of people around me, people like my parents, people like friends, close friends, and also it's... The good network, that it's a a network support system yeah. that you have. And I think it's really important to have a network who you can just go to if you've had a really rough day, if you're going, if you're having messages like that. It really helps because if you don't, and it can sometimes really bring you down to a really dark place, and I've been very lucky with the support that I've been able to keep out of that. From that, you've sort of like made it a sort of initiative to go and teach these people that cyberbullying is actually not okay. No, so my parents and I, we have an initiative, The Girl Behind the Face, where we do talk about this because I think that cyber when I went through cyberbullying, especially when I was younger, it was in its infancy, it was very early on, a lot of people didn't really know what it was. A lot of people didn't know how to tackle it. Mm. And I think it, it could be you, it could be me, anyone could be bullied over the internet. And I think a lot of people don't realize that you, it's a person behind a screen. It's not like face-to-face -face bullying. And so that's why it can hit so much harder psychologically. Mm. And so that's why we try to bring that to the fore because, it's a, because if there is somebody out there um, who is being bullied or indeed who is, you know, mm. heaven forbid, a bully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully they can realize the, that their actions do hurt that, and hopefully they can reconsider what they're doing. It doesn't always work, but hopefully if people can realize what they're doing, then maybe cyberbullying could be reduced a, a little bit. Let me ask you this. People do look at you differently. Yes. How do you react to this and remain positive and inspire <laughs> others at the same time? I just go about life I just, I, in the best way that I can. I try to smile as much as I can. I try to just ignore people around me. But there are times when it gets too much. And again, I lean on support. Again, I lean on network because if I didn't have that network, I would be very, very lost. Whenever I get um, stared at or discriminated against because of the way that I look. I just had an incident this afternoon where I was in a restaurant just minding my own business, just having lunch, because um, I love eating. <laughs> um, and a woman put a bag down in at a partition table beside me. She walks by and then she sees me. She looks at me with a sort of like, who are you? Y y mm. You know, what's wrong with you? And I, I carried on eating because I just thought, yeah. I mean, but I get very pent up about it. I get very affected by things like this. Because I it's don't- it's hard to ignore. Yeah, it's, it's hard to ignore because you don't want to be seen as odd, the odd one out. Yeah. Anyway, so the woman went back. Um, she went to the manager of the restaurant and she demanded to be moved to another table. But what made me feel a little bit better <laughs> um, I talked out, I spoke out about it. Okay. I put it on my personal social media page, but I think it's also important to um, highlight that this does happen to me, and even though I have a positive facade, I, th things like this still happen. What do you think people can learn from your story, Moi? 
I think that with our family initiative, the girl behind her face, raising more awareness, going further, um, hopefully getting a book out of the same name later on. Um, but also being a voice for people who don't have one. Because I think I'm, there are so many people out there with both visible and invisible differences who unfortunately aren't able to speak out because of circumstance. If, I, if, we, if me and my family can help do that, then I think that would be amazing. I'm looking forward to your next step and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me.